I would say today has been a very productive day for me. Um, I have so much other stuff to talk about. I don't know when or how to talk about it. I'm just going to start. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to walk through this case and speak about the type of evidence that they could use against the defense. So this is going to be the mini step before the defense video because there's certain things and that we need to understand. So the way evidence is going to be presented is either going to be tangible or intangible. Now, tangible evidence is something you can feel. It has substance. Circumstantial evidence can become tangible evidence if it's proven within a certain grounds or means. So, for instance, circumstantial evidence is basically a fact that leads to other facts within a case. So if someone had fingerprints somewhere that alleges that they had this gun in their hand because their fingerprints are on this, which leads to them having touched the gun. So I can allege since this gun was used in the case that this gun is matched to the murder. So their fingerprints is on it. They used it at the scene of the crime during the commence of crime. That's what circumstantial evidence is. Direct evidence deals with the eyewitness. So in this testimony, the eyewitness who would be the direct evidence first on the scene who put up the social media post, is he going to speak up? Because I don't see how he's going to speak up with so many holes in his story. That's part of what I'm trying to explain to everyone. So the direct evidence is untrustworthy. How are they going to use it? Let alone, did they even investigate or question him? So now, as we're looking at tangible evidence, what tangible evidence is there? What, social media posts? Okay, what fact did it lead to? Let's allege you did check the money serial numbers. Did their money in their pocket match Tentacion? Would he withdrew? That would be circumstantial evidence. And yes, that's very tangible. I would agree. But... Here's my issue with the whole thing. These men also need to be linked to the crime scene by more than that. It has to be more. Did you find any clothing, anything else tangible on video, what they were wearing to suggest that they actually committed the crime? These are things that are a must. If there's no must added to this type of situation, then there's no way that you can actually identify someone. And this is my problem. If you're able to make some type of judgment on a case without tangible evidence, that defeats the whole purpose of any type of evidence that is permissible and that is used in a court case. And if that is allowed, then you've just broken what we thought to be the law. You just surpassed the law to use intangible evidence to convict someone on a case that isn't really solid. So where is your direct evidence? Matter of fact, why haven't you talked to the people at Riva Motorsports and pulled one of them as a witness for direct evidence? That's what I don't understand. I guess that's what I'm missing. And I'm going to cover in the blanks around that. I have my reasoning and speculation to why that wouldn't happen. But where's the circumstantial evidence to build other facts? I don't see it. You can't use video. Because all we seen on video was individuals walking somewhere, standing somewhere. It was not something definitive I could use to say they were here at this time doing this. Where's the security footage? I've been asking this for weeks now. It doesn't make sense to me. Now let's get into a little bit before I come back to that part. That's just a quick explanation for my viewers to get how I'm thinking. Something's either tangible or intangible. If you don't have documents, you don't have fingerprints that lead to someone holding a gun, what are we really talking about? How are we hunting these four suspects? How did subpoenas get released for these four men? It's not really making sense. What, you seen him on a video or near the scene? Well, we also saw a guy who allegedly had a mixtape speaking about it, the situation and stuff. And they were documented near the scene, streets away, at certain given points of time, let alone... I haven't even spoken to you guys about the direct connections between these guys and Tentacion of why social media was alleging they have done it. And again, I don't drop names unless I have solid proof of things. 
That's my difference between me and the investigators. I'm not going to show photos or throw out names unless I have direct evidence linking them to a situation. I could use their mixtape. I could use their social media posts that are very eerie to the situation. But I'm not going to do that because that's not tangible evidence. Now, to clarify some things of what I mentioned in my four wishings and four thoughts on the baby mothers that are alleged to the circumstantial evidence of this case. Let's be real, okay? There's three. And tomorrow you'll understand the love triangle, okay? That's going to be, I gave you a preview of tomorrow, so you get it. That would involve Cynthia, that would involve Geneva, and that would involve Bree. Now, shout to somebody who I'm going to name at the top of the video when I produce the evidence of that video and talk in detail. Bree was actually an, a woman that he messed with before Geneva or Cynthia came into the picture. Now, I knew about Geneva and Cynthia. I did not know information about Bree until I linked up with a commenter, shout to Poison Ivy, and me and her talked in detail. And she actually gave me a lot of really good information that supports it. I really appreciate it. And it did build a picture for me. I just don't have, put it this way, I have the cannon loaded, but I don't know which direction it shoots at. So I don't know who it's really implicating, but I do have the evidence, the solid, tangible evidence, if that makes any sense. But these three, he was messing with. Now, relationship wise, in Love Triangle, I'll run down to you his exact relationship profiles with them by the way of what we've seen through social media and by the decisions he made as he was moving from woman to woman. Um, it just is what it is. But to understand the circumstantial evidence of this case with the four suspects, all the evidence is going to be very circumstantial. I mean, to the point you guys are going to be playing leapfrog with circumstantial evidence. I mean, you're going to have to jump forward to another fact. Oh, then jump back to another thing. It's just really not going to make sense unless you have fingerprints or documents to basically prove this. Now, so you understand why I mentioned other things like right of will and other stuff. That's tangible evidence. So the fact his mother's signature was on the right of will as the host, that's tangible. She signed for his life. That is tangible. The fact that I mentioned the money, how it was 20s when they were flashing it, but allegedly he withdrew hundreds. That's tangible evidence. You get what I'm saying? So when I speak up here and talk to you, it's in a means of sensibility. It's not just me playing around with video, playing around with social media, then going on a manhunt to pull four black men up out their houses so their family watch like, and, and say you're under arrest. I don't play that game. If I'm really looking to prove some type of guilt, I'm really dancing in reality. I'm not dancing with the stars, like trying to figure out what dance I'm going to do or how I'm going to make it make sense. I'm using base foundation of evidence and building a clear picture so that all my commenters can give thoughts and opinions that are sensible because a lot of them are very intelligent and they have very good information to add to the situation. I've seen it all. Respect to you all. Even if we went back and forth, and even if we had some type of disagreement, I never hated what you said. Unless it was slander and we exchanged words. I mean, that is what that is. But at the top of it, you all have very good viewpoints. That is what I want my channel to have. I want it to be sensible, smart people that have strong, objective opinion about situations. I don't want dummies. And don't get me wrong. I enjoy the dumb talk. You know what I mean? Back and forth when we're joking about something and things, that's always fun. But when we're talking about subjects, I want sensibility. I want people who have some type of motivation in their mind to say something other than repeating lyrics to some rap song. You get what I'm saying? Because life's more than that. Life's much deeper than that. And a lot of you showed me that. More so, all of you than anything it's only been a few on each video maybe like 
at least six people. Matter of fact, just look at the dislikes. That would tell you who's dumb, period. And that's why I respect a lot of what you guys do. And I, I love when you guys want to get in touch. Again, hit me up on Twitter. Um, if you want to know it, just comment and I'll send it to you right away in a comment. But tangible evidence is key. Shout to notification gang too. Gang, gang. You know, sensibility with this case, it has to be tangible. Even if you start out circumstantial, if it doesn't become tangible and it's intangible evidence, it, it's going to flop. Only tangible evidence is accepted by court proceedings, you know, and that becomes admissible evidence. You get how this works? You start out with circumstantial or direct. It has to make sense and there has to be tangibility to it. Even if the witness seen it, this witness ran, but then he heard and saw what happened. That's not tangible. That's not. How could that even be direct evidence? Matter of fact, that's almost hearsay. You know what I mean? Something out of court, but then trying to push it in the court. If they mention that witness, that becomes hearsay evidence. That's not direct evidence. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see if you try and mention what this witness and news reporter said, because that's hearsay evidence. There's nothing tangible or direct about that. This man, he, he ran. He won't know. How will he know? He won't. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I have one more. I'm coming to you guys today. You know, I don't really care about the views as much as I do about the subjects I cover regarding what we're talking about. Um, the views are going to come because everything sensible from this channel. Zara Rice Reserve speaks with knowledge. He does not speak with stupidity. He speaks from an enlightened point of view. Nothing stupid. All sensible. Next one coming up. And you know who you rocking with. And you know how I rock. All Rice Reserve.